we'd like to move on to charging now and this is something that we'll be predominantly be doing on our EVs um, whilst at home. Um, Nissan, uh, for example, along with the government um, here in the UK, uh, cover most, if not all, of the uh, price involved in actually having a home charger installed. So the way it basically works is, is that when you take delivery of a new or used vehicle from, for example, we're just going to stick with Nissan, um, Nissan will pay some of the cost, the government will pay the rest of the cost of the uh, home charging unit. The only cost that you will incur will be whether you choose to have um, a tethered cable. If you choose to have an untethered unit, the cost is nothing at the moment. This is uh, November now in 2017. Um, but I'm having a tethered uh, unit, um, which I'll explain in a little while. Uh, why I'm having the tethered unit and the tethered units are about a hundred pound that you'll have to pay as a consumer um, and then I say the government and the dealership or Nissan UK will take care of the rest of the cost so moving on to the pros and cons first of all we'll discuss the tethered which is what I'm having so the pros of the tethered cables is that they physically can't be unplugged so from either end because the unit on the wall is hardwired from that end and then the socketed end that you plug into the vehicle you can actually lock in with your central locking system so when you press the uh, button on the side of the door or the remote you can actually use a lock-in um, button on the dashboard on the previous shape leaf the new one should have exactly the same if not when you press the remote it will lock it in place so no one can physically unplug it is basically completely secure um, and if someone tries unplugging it or tries walking past inadvertently in an accident they won't be able to unplug it they'll literally trip over the lead it's that solid in the vehicle end and the wall end the cons of having a tethered system is a the cost is going to cost you about 100 pounds more expensive and b if you do ch decide to change your vehicle in years to come um, manufacturers that is some manufacturers don't use the same socket type so your socket that you've got specifically when you have that car uh, when you have it originally installed it will fit obviously all Nissans for years to come I can't see them ever changing um, their socket type um, the DC fast charger which is a uh, socket which is the Chadamo they've kept on the next generation leaf as well so again they probably won't be changing that for years because it, it's universally used all over Europe um, but like I say the, the con is the fact that if I do change to another manufacturer which I'm not ever planning on doing for hopefully years to come um, if I do or you do you would have to have a new uh, cable hardwired into that unit and unless you're a qualified electrician um, I wouldn't want to touch it um, you'd have to call someone out to then obviously hardwire that cable the new cable into that particular unit now moving on to the untethered pros and cons first of all you've got no cost it's pretty much zero there's nothing to pay um, they can be unplugged from both ends um, which means that if say for instance say as I said before you get a new vehicle say years down the line you get a new manufacturer you can simply go and get a new cable that you'll literally fit into your existing socket on the wall uh, with the new part that's made for that new particular car plug it in and you can start charging um, so that's a good plus point the downside is the reverse of the tethered if someone inadvertently walks past the cable it can be pulled out you can be left the next morning going to work with a flat battery or the same amount of battery charge you had when you first started charging because it would be pulled out there's no way of locking it currently on those charges that could actually change in the future but currently I've not seen any that actually has a locking mechanism that will physically lock it in place on the wall unit so that's another negative and obviously um, if you live in in an area that is um, a little bit unscrupulous 
and your uh, your driveway is uh, not adjacent to your vehicle and it's on a facing wall, someone could literally put their arm around the corner and deliberately unplug you and you've again got no charge in the morning. So that's one of the main reasons I'm going tethered. Um, your mileage may vary. You might like the thought of maybe changing your car uh, a lot more often. Uh, could be a lease purchase. So that is obviously a decision that you'll have to make as and when you come to get your electric uh, vehicle and you order your home charging point. The 2018 Nissan Leaf, like the previous 2017 generations models, has two sockets uh, residing under the charging socket flap. Uh, one is for the slower 6.6 uh, kilowatt charging and the other is for the Cadamo uh, DC fast charging socket. We'll cover the uh, slower home charging first as this will be uh, the majority of the time the way we will be um, charging the vehicle. Um, Nissan at the moment are quoting us around eight, hour, 8 hours from flat to fully charging the 40 kilowatt hour leaf. However, apart from the range tests that I'll be uh, completing once I take delivery of the vehicle, um, most of the time I'll probably arrive home uh, on a daily basis with about 30% of the battery remaining going by my current daily uh, mileage that I cover. So that will probably only take around five to six hours. The Cadamo port on the 2018 Nissan Leaf is pretty much the same as on the previous generations in that it allows uh, DC fast charging from the DC fast chargers that are to be found around most major airports and motorway service stations. Uh, the prices regarding the DC fast chargers vary from um, operator to operator, much like it does with fuel. Um, some will charge you a set base amount of money plus a kilowatt hour. Uh, Shell are talking about charging 49 pence per kilowatt uh, hour to charge the vehicle, which is going to be four times the price what we currently pay at home. Now, whilst that seems quite expensive, it's still going to be cheaper than petrol or diesel at the moment, and it will give you the ability to charge the vehicle, say, it, for example, if you're going to an airport to pick up relatives or, or passengers, um, you can then charge, which will definitely get you back home from even quite far distances, upwards of about 120 miles. Um, one of the main benefits of the DC fast charging is the fact that it actually charges the car uh, to about 80% of its capacity in about 35 to 40 minutes. So, for example, say you are at an airport um, or you're having a break at a service station and you're having some lunch, you could use that time to DC fast charge your car back up to pretty much its near full capacity, probably about 20% lower. To, instead of having a 160 mile range, you'd probably have about 140 mile, which would um, help you out immensely. Um, and the other great thing about, especially um, at airports, if you actually do use a DC fast chargers, included in that price is parking. So instead of waiting on the outskirts of the airport, um, where it's a lot cheaper or you just don't want to go into the car parks you can actually go into the car parks and while you're filling up in the DC fast chargers you will actually have free parking so that's a good little uh, plus point um, to remember if you do have to fast charge but like I say predominantly most of your charging will take place like I'm planning on doing uh, primarily at home where I can maximize my fuel savings or electricity savings on a daily basis. But like I say, it's good that you've got the option of uh, DC fast chargers. Regarding where these DC fast chargers are, there is an app that you can use on iOS and Android called ZapMap. You can download it today. You don't need to have to have a Beverly or a battery electric vehicle now. You can actually download the app and actually locate all of the charging points across the United Kingdom. You can pinch and zoom the map and actually go down to literally street level and you can actually see where the DC fast chargers are, the different kinds of fast chargers for different cars like Tesla, for example, and um, that uses a different uh, socket type. And you can find all the slower points of charge as well. Mm -hmm. 